Hello, and welcome to another episode of our 20-Minute Playbook series, where each week I sit down with an elite performer from iconic founders to world-renowned investors and best-selling authors to dive into the ideas, frameworks, and strategies that got them to the top of their field, all in less than 20 minutes. I'm Daniel Scrivener, and on the show today, I'm joined by Adrian Aun, founder and CEO of Forward, which is building an insurance-free healthcare system focused on preventative healthcare from the ground up. Forward was founded in 2017 to invert the typical model of healthcare, where most healthcare follows the service model, where one patient sees a single doctor only when they need care. Forward is building healthcare focused on health and preventative care that's productized so you can use it anytime, anywhere, that's scalable so it's affordable for everyone, and always on with help available through Forward's app, as well as a network of doctor's offices around the United States. Which might sound like, well, how healthcare should have been all along, which is the goal. Before founding Forward, Adrian worked as an advisor to the White House on the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, as well as a director of special projects for the CEO of Google and the founder of Sidewalk Labs. In this episode, Adrian shares why he's so fanatical about being problem-focused rather than solution-focused, and how he runs problem-centric brainstorms at Forward, where the goal is to beat up on other people's ideas in the name of getting to the best ideas. What he learned working with Sergey Brin and Eric Schmidt at Google, as well as the other advisors on the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. Why modern fitness wearables are broken and why Adrian thinks we need to build tools to tell people what to do with that data, not to share the data with them. And why he loves the book Factfulness by Hans Rosling. And so much more. You can find the show notes and transcript for this episode at outlieracademy.com slash 121. It's 121. You can learn more about Forward at GoForward.com, and you can also follow Adrian on Twitter at A-D-R-I-A-N-A-O-U-N. With that, please enjoy my conversation with Adrian. Adrian, welcome back to Outlier Academy. Thank you so much for coming on, this time for 20-Minute Playbook. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. So for people that haven't listened to the other interview, uh, which I'm going to plug at the end and which I highly encourage everyone to listen to, which is all about Forward, can you just give people a quick sketch of your background and a quick overview of what you're building at Forward? Yeah. Uh, I'm a uh, serial entrepreneur. That means I uh, I specialize in Honey Nut Cheerios. No, really. Um, I, uh, I started a bunch of different uh, companies in the tech space, spent a little time over at Google um, working with Larry um, on a bunch of the special projects, starting the uh, starting a bunch of the alphabet companies. And now I'm uh, and now I've got a healthcare company I'm trying to I'm trying to rebuild the entire healthcare system for the entire planet all from the ground up, mostly because uh, I'm a glutton for punishment. And uh, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get healthcare to billions and billions of people, trying to get healthcare to the people who need it most on this planet. Aside from that, I, uh, I also am a fairly active angel. I'm probably in about 300 or so companies. Um, uh, and, uh, and in my spare time, oh wait, I, I don't have spare time. Yep. That's, uh, that's my story. <laughs> that's amazing. That's an amazing overview. I, I want to start by asking about, uh, what you've been fascinated by recently. You know, we talked in the last interview about your kind of problem focus. One of the questions I always ask, uh, I'm really excited to hear your answer is what you've been intrigued by lately. What can't you stop thinking about? It can't be anything. So one of the things that I spend a lot of time thinking about is, is, in Silicon Valley today, we spend a whole, we spend an enormous amount of time working on uh, what I like to think of as the low hanging fruit, right? Like we always go after the problems that, in some ways, are the easiest the easiest to fund, the easiest to execute. The I don't know. Um, I, I think the the YC guys are going to hate me for saying this, but I, I look through the YC batch of five hundred companies, and I, I frankly I fall asleep. Um, I, I'm not saying that those companies aren't going to be like you know real businesses. I think some of them are, but I fall asleep. Like in some ways, it's like where where are the companies that are truly changing the world? Um, where are the com- like these days? You can count on one hand the 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 Teslas and the SpaceXs, the people that say like I'm going to just go after like an entire industry and change how it works. And we're afraid of uh, of going after things that aren't just bits, going after the real atoms. We're afraid of things that take 
10 or 20 or even 30 years. We're afraid of things that take a, a lot of money to go after. We're afraid of things that truly, truly impact humanity. And I think it's a bummer. Now, one of the things that, that, um, that I spend a lot of time thinking about is how can, I, how can I take industries and make them go exponential, right? One of the most fascinating things about, uh, about when you look at the, the SpaceX's and the Tesla's is that they're taking industries that you don't think of as exponential industries, and they are fundamentally making them go exponential, right? We took, we took rockets. Rockets were roughly kind of going along incrementally, and now you can look at the pace of innovation, and it's literally taking off, no pun intended. You can look at um, you can look at automotive and literally, you know, uh, Tesla for 17, 18 years was underestimated. And then overnight, just boom, starts to go exponential. At Ford, we're trying to do the exact same thing with healthcare. We ask ourselves, can we get healthcare to a billion people? Literally, Kaiser 75 years old. They have roughly 11, 12 million users. Like they can be going another 500 years. They'll never get to a billion people, right? So we ask ourselves, how can we build the first healthcare system that covers literally the entire planet? But why are we why are we not asking ourselves this for every industry? Why does this not exist for 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 food? Why does this not exist for education? What why are we not doing this? And this is one of the things that that I think is kind of the lost art of Silicon Valley. So I've been spending a lot of time kind of trying to wrap my head around that. So well said. I feel like someone just needs to write a book or do a short tape on like where the hell is the ambition? <laughs> why is it gone? And how do we get it back? And how do we fund it and create a system that can actually push it forward? I want to talk for a second about your superpowers. You know, when you think about building the company, the experience, the team at Forward, uh, you've done a bunch of incredible stuff before Forward. What do you think of as your superpowers and how have those helped you to build Forward? So I always hate the word superpower because it feels like it's like one of the most arrogant things you can say about yourself. But if I'm going to answer it nonetheless, I think one of my one of the things that I'm uh, decent at, um, it's going to sound fairly obnoxious, is I'm really decent at being incredibly stubborn. There's a lot of times in my life where I believe something that nobody else around me believes. And it's really, really, really hard to know something that everybody is telling you you're wrong on, literally everybody, and say, you know what? Kindly, fuck all of you. I'm just going to keep doing it anyway. And not only am I going to keep doing it, I'm going to bet the fucking farm on it. And I'll tell you, when I started forward, literally everybody was like, you're wrong. Like on like 14 different counts. And in fact, the only reason we were able to raise money, it's like, I remember we went up to the who's who, the Mark Benioffs, the Eric Schmitz, the Vinod Coastals, and every single one of them, this isn't going to work. You can't get consumers to pay for healthcare. You can't operate in a regulated space. You can't get doctors to, by the way, we're going to give you money just because, you know, you're Adrian, you got a decent resume, whatever, you're going to pivot. And like, like, but this is like the 17th time in my life where it's like, like the amount of times people have told me like, oh, what you're doing will not work. Even in forward, like we have a big project we're working on right now that we haven't announced. Where at the beginning of this project, everybody in this company was like, no, no, this is a bad idea. Now the entire company is working on it. And it's like, well, hold on, what changed? And one of the things is ideas are incredibly fragile. It's very, very easy for an idea to die on the vine. And so it, you have to have an enormous amount of conviction in your idea. I actually have another a company I want to start right now that I've talked to people about for a few years. Um, uh, I'm not going to start it while doing Ford, but, uh, but if, I ever, uh, if I ever do another company, this is going to be my, my idea. And everybody I've talked, about, uh, everybody I've talked to about it says, uh, says it's a terrible idea. And I'm 100% convinced it's a, it's a great idea. And one of the things that's amazing to me is, uh, is the amount to which I'm like, but I know that if I go build that product, every single one of you will use that product. But think of, think of how much, think of how much like you have to have mental fortitude to bring something to, to, to bear. So when you think about, when you think about companies, when you think about, uh, when you think about startups, and an insane amount is just willing something into existence because if you can't get past literally the naysayers, like it, it turns out that the, the motions that putting your left foot in front of your right foot is not actually, uh, is not actually going to happen if you're not, uh, if you're not past, you, you know, your own, your own demons in your mind. Um, and so, so that I think is one of my, uh, one of my superpowers. And then, and then the second um, that kind of goes part and parcel with that is at some point getting somebody to agree with you, you know, it's like you see something that others don't see, and at some point, 
um, you need to be able to convey that. Even if you can't get somebody on day one, you need to, I don't know, draw a picture or build a prototype or get some momentum enough that others will start to see your way. Um, uh, and once you do, um, that's how you slowly start to change change the world. Yeah, you sound very decent at both of those. And I mean, they do sound like superpowers. <laughs> I'll change the name of that. I'll change the phrasing of that question going forward. I want to talk for a second about health uh, and, you know, I don't know, health in general, kind of performance boosters, maybe a little bit. And, and the question I want to ask was, you know, I'm guessing, you know, during this interview, I've been looking at you have this ring on your finger, which I'm guessing might be an aura ring. You know, clearly Forward is a very technology focused company. We're in an age where right now, you know, I find it amazing just the amount of interesting innovations that's going on, whether it's Eight Sleep or Whoop or Aura or, or you know, a whole host of, of companies. What are you most excited about? And are there any supplements, wearables, products, tools that you use and love? I'm going to be really annoying here and say no. Um, and the reason is, um, I think they're all garbage. And I'm not trying to knock the aura people. I actually don't think it's their fault. Um, I think that we've created things in the wrong, in an essence, the wrong order. When you look at digital cameras from 20 years ago, digital cameras were cool. Digital cameras were awesome. But, uh, but they didn't really do that much, right? Um, uh, we walked around, we took some photos. I call this the, the, the sharper image uh, era, right? I had a digital camera, but I actually had 17 like stupid shits that I bought every Christmas. And I, I don't know, I bought them, I used them for a week and I threw them away. And then we got the iPhone. And the second we had the iPhone, everything changed. Now, the reason is because these things can't really live by themselves, right? It turns out that a connected toaster is like a fucking like waste of my time. Um, uh, and this is roughly a connected toaster, right? And by that, what I mean is, what does this do? Well, every day I wake up and I will tell you what it does. Every day it tells me I slept terribly. No shit, I slept terribly. Thank you. Now what? Well, what you really want it to do is you really want it to like connect up to my doctor. You really want it to tell me what to do next, change my diet, change my exercise, help me with my mental health, help, like change my life. But it's not. Why? Because it's not my doctor. Well, it's a little like the connected toaster without the iPhone. It's like your Nest without your iPhone. It's like your connected TV without your iPhone. It's like at some point, I need that base that they all connect up to to connect to my life. And they don't have that, right? There is no digital doctor. So we need to create that digital doctor first. And then all these things need to plug in. My watch um, the other day did this really fun thing where it goes, your heart rate has been elevated for the last 10 minutes and you are not moving around. Um, and I was like, first off, like, oh God, that's a little scary. And second off, I was like, now what? And it was like, you should do something about that. And I was like, Really? Like, like, what do you mean you should do something about that? Like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Or my, my watch does this thing where it like records my, um, uh, it's got that like uh, uh, hearing loss um, thing where it's like, you, you have been exposed to loud noises because I think I was at a club or something. And it's like, great. Like now what? It's like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's like, great. I don't know. Hand somebody a stethoscope. Just go around and for Christmas, go get your friends stethoscopes and just be like, great. Now your heart's going to be better. I got you a stethoscope. No, it's not. What are you doing? Like, like this is insane. Right. And so like what you realize is like, we've done like, we've done the 10% of the problem. We've given somebody a piece of data. In fact, in healthcare these days, they talk about like data overload, data overload. Uh, we're giving people too much data. Yeah. It's because you forgot to build the damn product. You know, it's like, like, this is absurd. My, my thermostat collects a million data points. It didn't give me the data. It just told me, like, here's what you need to do, you know? It's like, but, but again, we forgot to build the doctor. <laughs> so build the damn digital doctor. That's what we actually need. So well said. I hope that's the secret project that you might be working on it forward <laughs> because it's badly needed and you need to, inter you know, you need to integrate all these things. It's obvious. Except that it's not so secret. Yes, yes. I'd love to talk about lessons learned for a second. You know, your background's fascinating. I'll just quickly recap some of the highlights you touched on at the beginning. You've been an advisor to the White House on the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. You're the founder of uh, Sidewalk Labs at, at Google, and you were director of special projects uh, to Larry Page, um, who was the CEO of Google at the time, basically helping create a bunch of alphabet companies. So the question I want to ask is, you've clearly worked with, I think, what anyone would say is an incredible cohort of people. What are some of the most interesting principles, mental models, rules of thumb? Um, 
what did you pick up from some of these people? Yeah, so I've got a bunch. Um, so so I don't know that there's like any any one that like went, you know rules them all, but let me give you a couple thoughts. One thought is it's just as easy to work on something that's big as, as something that's small. So I was asked, like, pretend you were going to go and say, I'm going to build a startup that builds a better spoon. Literally, we're just going to sell spoons. What are you going to do? Raise a couple million bucks, get a couple people in a room, work on the product for a year, ship a product. Okay. I'm going to work on a startup that uh, that uh, works on reinventing all of healthcare. I'll raise a couple million bucks, get some people in a room, work on a product, ship a product in, you know, in a year. So look, at some point, like you're going to spend a lot of hours. You're going to have a lot of fucking stress. You might as well work on something that matters. You know, don't work on the damn spoon. So the first thing is I just want to spend my life on things that are truly, truly impactful, things that are meaty, things that are deep, right? The second thing is care deeply about the problem, not about your, your idea. And we talked about this, but but people tend to get super damn attached to their ideas, to their solutions. And I've never really understood why. It's like your idea, like whatever, it's an idea you came up with in five seconds. It's going to be wrong. You're going to ship it. You're going to ship your spoon. You're going to learn that the spoon could be better. You're going to ship V2 of the spoon, then V3, then V17, then V49. You're going to, there's going to be a lot of spoons. Don't care about your, your, your idea. Care about the problem that it solves. Problems tend not to change. Why are you doing it? Do people need healthcare? Do people need spoons? Why are you in the game? Because that tends not to change for quite some time. Um, and that and that's the thing that I think truly matters. Those are great. And I love how you worked spoons so heavily into all of those <laughs> examples. It's the world's most amazing. I can't wait to to find a founder that pitches me on a better, better spoon. <laughs> Um, I'd love to talk for a second about your philosophy for building a company like Forward. You know, if you had to distill down your business and company building philosophies, you know, your guiding principles into just a few words, what would those be? I'm not sure that it's that different than what I just said, which is everything should ladder down from the problem, right? Companies companies exist in service of, of a problem. We tend these days to care more about the problem, especially in Silicon Valley. We care more about the the, the company than the pro- than the than the reason we created the company. In fact, you you probably know tons of people are like, "I'm starting a company. Great. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm working through a few ideas." It's kind of weird. Like, really? It's like I'm driving somewhere. Where are you driving? I don't know, but I'm driving somewhere. I'll let you know when I get there. Really? That's kind of odd. Like, I thought the point of the car was to get you to, okay, whatever. Um, and so, so I just like, like, why are you doing what you're doing? Start with the why, start with the problem, work backwards, right? If you're not doing that, frankly, you're on a full, it's fool's errand. It's like fool's mission. And so I just, I, I vehemently say like, work backwards from the problem and, and stay maniacally focused on it. Well, I love that example that you shared as well, too, which is the founder that's trying out 50 different, you know, ideas and and instead just figuring out a really compelling problem that you actually want to spend 10 years <laughs> and a lot of sweat and frustration and, you know, blood, sweat and tears building. Uh, I think that's a much more interesting frame for that. I want to talk for a second about books. And this one I'm going to leave super wide open. And the question I want to ask is just, uh, what books do have had an impact on you and what books do you love and recommend to others? And this could be founders, could be fiction, could be anything. <laughs> it's a funny thing because I don't, uh, I'm going to say something that's going to be terrible. I really, I'm not a fan of books. I think books are, uh, I'm a very big fan of books for entertainment. You want to read Harry Potter, read Harry Potter. Um, uh, books for knowledge um, consumption, I think are just a highly inefficient way of consuming knowledge. You're reading like, you know, in 300 pages, what you could consume in four pages. And I've always thought that to be incredibly absurd, but I'd much rather read Wikipedia. I think it's an incredibly dense, um, uh, really great way to consume information. That being said, if you do want to read a book, Factfulness by Hans Rosling is one of the most amazing um, reads. It's incredibly easy, like a uh, a nine-year-old could read it. But um, it's a really great way to help you understand how clueless we are about the world. We have these assumptions about the state of the world that are almost entirely wrong. We have these assumptions like, you know, the vast majority of the world is living in poverty and the vast majority of the world is, you know, and most women in third world countries can't drive. And and it's like, all of this is just wrong. And, um, and so it's, it's really good at giving us perspective on where humanity is. And so I'd highly recommend it. That's a fantastic book and no one has recommended that. So bonus points for that one. Um, I'll be excited to include that in the show notes. 
Two final questions. I want to talk about habits for a second. And, you know, my, this is a very tired question asking about habits and routines, but I, I think there's something interesting here. The way I like to ask it is what tiny habit or practice has had the biggest positive impact on your life or your performance? And it can be anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you one, but it's not a tiny one. Um, uh, or it depends on tiny. Uh, I cycle a lot. Um, I cycle tons. Um, I cycle usually a couple hours every morning. And the reason that it's um, uh, that it's super valuable is it's my version of meditation. Um, I'm like, go, go, go. My mom, my computer every two seconds. I'm getting inbounds every five. Like, it's one of the few times where it's like, I can't be on my phone. Uh, or it's very hard, very dangerous. Um, I cycle in the mountains. Um, and uh, it's it's just, you know, you process everything in your head. You let it all go. It puts me, uh, it puts me in my happy place, um, and it's just fantastic. It's, uh, it's a great place to be. It's a great. It's your your version of meditation, which is moving and exerting a lot of effort <laughs> and struggle and strife. Last question: If you could go back to the start of your career, start of your life, and whisper some words of advice in your ear, is there anything you would tell yourself? Yeah, I would buy Microsoft stock. No, um, uh, so I would say. Um, yeah, what I would say is on your deathbed, the only thing you're going to care about is in work is impact. You're not going to care about uh, you're not going to care about money, and you're not going to care about title or career. Spend no time thinking about it. Spend no time valuing it. You're just going to care about what your life meant. I think it's very easy to get caught up. Um, uh, I, I was lucky to learn this lesson early, but I think it's very easy to get caught up in the rat race. And then you wake up and you're like, this was dumb. I just wasted a bunch of years on this shit. And like, it just does not matter. But what does matter is what you did with your life. Um, and, uh, and so that's what I would tell myself. Well, and it goes back kind of beautifully to your previous point around it's just as easy to work on something big as it is to work on something small. Thank you so much for the time, Adrian. This has been one of my favorite interviews. I really appreciate it. Not at all. It was an absolute pleasure, man. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. You can find the show notes and transcript at outlieracademy.com slash 121. It's 121. For more from Adrian Owen, listen to episode 118, where he joins me on our Outlier Founder Series to go deep on Forward, which is building an insurance-free healthcare system focused on preventative healthcare from the ground up. Forward was founded in 2017 to invert the typical model of healthcare, where most healthcare follows the service model, where one patient sees a single doctor only when they need care. Forward is building healthcare focused on health and preventative care. It's productized so you can use it anytime, anywhere. That's scalable so it's affordable for everyone and is always on with help available through Forward's app and a network of doctor's offices all around the United States. Which might sound like, well, how healthcare should have been all along which is the goal. And to be clear, Forward is tackling a massive problem in the United States. In 2021, healthcare spending accounted for a full 19.7% of GDP. And that number is compounding at an astounding rate of 6 to 7% year over year, which begs the questions, how is that even possible? And what happens when, percent, when healthcare as a percentage of GDP rises to 30 or even 40%? which is a likely scenario that Adrian talks through in that episode. For more on Forward, listen to episode 118 or visit outlieracademy.com slash 118. That's 118. You can find videos of all of our interviews on YouTube at youtube.com slash outlieracademy. On our channel, you'll find all of our full-length interviews as well as our favorite short clips from every episode. So if you're short on time, you can always find something interesting to listen to. So make sure to subscribe. We post new videos and clips every single week. And if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn under the handle Outlier Academy. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you right here with a brand new episode next Friday.